And the word of the Lord in Revelation 19, verse 9 says, And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Luke 14, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. And we're going to look at verse 15, and then we'll stay there for the remainder of our time with each other. And it reads, and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. I want to talk about the dinner guests, the invitees, and the diligent servant. I want to talk about that this morning. The dinner guests the invitees, and the diligent servant. I want to ask you a question. I just, it was on my, my, my mind as I was like coming to church today. When, when you all get a text, and just, I just want to kind of feel y'all out, see where y'all at. When y'all get a text and y'all see, um, let's say you see a couple, and um, they're a beautiful couple, and uh, they look like the, the photo that they took is like airbrushed. It's like, look like it's professionally done. And they say, we're going to get married. And they give you the date. And they say, save the date. I wonder how many of y'all, like, like mentally <laughs> save the date. <laughs> I'm just feeling y'all a little bit. Do you, like, make a mention of, oh, oh, my best friend, my BFF is getting married. Oh, my boy, my boy from, my boy from college, he getting married. And the date is kind of like eight months off. Yeah, anybody ever had that? And they and don't they look like don't they look perfect on the picture? Like who took this picture? And they showing off their rings. And they say save the they say save the what the date. The date might be months off. And I'm just asking you. You don't have to say anything out loud. Don't incriminate yourself. How many of you actually make a mental note and say, Oh yeah, I got to be there? Or do you kind of like, oh okay, okay. And then when the date come up on you, now you're in panic mode. Oh, what, what was the date? What was the, what was the time and where am I supposed to be at? There, there's been, a, there's been a, an invitation given out to all humanity. And some people, like the people that we're going to read about, they just kind of, they don't see the importance of it. They just don't see the importance of it. And, and we live in a world where people are so busy, people don't have time for the most important thing. We don't have the, the things, Holy Ghost, you are, you are leading right now. The things that we say that we work so hard for, like family, uh, being, with our, uh, being with our children, being with our uh, spouse, the thing that we say that we're working so hard for, we never get to do those things. Because we're so busy. And it, it trickles down and it, it spills over into our spiritual life. And so th the word of the Lord in, in, in Luke 14. And verse 16. We read verse 15, did we not? Verse, and let's read it again. Because it's important and we'll get to it at the end. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, meaning Jesus, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then, the, and then verse 16, you should see some red letters. Then said he unto him. Then Jesus speaks. This is what Jesus says. He gives a parable. A parable is a what kind of story with a what kind of meaning. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So look at what Jesus says. He says, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. He invited many. You can look on the screen for the New King James. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were invited, come, for all things are now what? Everything is ready. Did I tell you this certain man made a great supper? He did not just, it was not peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It was not a four for four at, 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 uh, at when this, this man made a great supper, a feast. He spared no expense. There was no cost too great. The, 
best of food, the best of plateware, the best, the, 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 the location, the facility was marvelous. It was breathtaking. Servants at attention. He made a great supper, and he invited a lot of people. And he sent his servant, everybody say his servant, at supper time to say to them that were invited, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. They all with one accord began to make excuse. And I'm going to continue to read and then we'll, and then we'll talk. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. This man, this certain man prepares this elaborate feast, this elaborate banquet. Think of all your favorite foods. They are there. Think of all your favorite drinks. They are there. Think, think, of, think of your plateware. Think about, think about the, 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 how your silverware is polished and the glass that you're drinking from. It is just, it's ornated in detail. And think about the servants who are in the kitchen. And my, we, my God, we're going to talk about the facility, the location. Oh, my God, the ambiance. And all of this represents salvation. This feast, this, this, this abundance of food, this abundance of drink, this joy, this fellowship, to be invited to this banquet, to this supper, to this feast, represents the salvation of God. And this certain man represents God. And he has invited many people. He invites not just a few people. He just don't invite his, his little circle. He don't invite his little entourage. He invites many people. He's not like us. We invite certain people. We got our cliques. We got our little circles. And we only invite people that like us and can do something for us. But this invitation goes out to many people. And the first man gets the invitation. And look what he says. And the Bible says, and they all with one accord began to make excuse. The first man says, the first man has a commercial enterprise excuse. He says, listen to what he says. He says, I have bought a piece of ground. And I must knees and go see it. I need to go inspect it. First of all, why did you buy a piece of ground? Why did you buy property that you have not inspected yet? I just, I just want to put that out there. I just want to put that out there for you. He says, uh, oh, he, he, look at his platitude. It, I mean, it, he, he knows how to say things. He knows, he knows how to speak. Oh, I, would, I would just love to be there. I just love to be there. But, you know, I bought this property on, on the... On the you know, his prime property, and I need to go see it. He makes a commercial enterprise excuse. I didn't, I didn't say it, but I, I'll say what J. Vernon McGee said. J. Vernon McGee, who I respect very well, said he's either a liar or a fool. He's either lying or he's foolish for buying a piece of property that he's never saw. And he's using this as the excuse as to why he cannot come to this, this banquet, why he has to refuse this invitation. The next man, the next man says, you know what? <laughs> oh, man, you know, I, I, bought these, I bought these yoke of oxen, and five of them. He says, and I go to test them. I go to prove them. Would you please have me excused? So you bought, you bought birds. Beast of burden, you bought oxen that you have not tested to see if they have enough strength to pull your load. Imagine someone, well, I know we do it all the time, uh, maybe we shouldn't. We buy, we buy houses and we buy cars off the internet. We haven't even dro driven them. We haven't even taken them to a mechanic to get them inspected. We just, oh, that, that's my color. It looked good. It got all the chrome that I like. But you don't know what, how the engine looks. And this man buys a, a yoke, five yoke of oxen, and he says, uh, I can't come. I can't accept the invitation because I have to go and prove the ox. He's either a liar or he's foolish. And I love money for something you don't know if it's going to work out for you. He makes a wage income business excuse. This guy... Life and living is way more important than accepting the invitation. The first guy, 
Man, he, he, he's about money. He's about investment. He's got to make his money work for him. He, he want to be sleep and still make him money. He's, he want to buy this prime real estate, but he haven't even inspected it yet. And he say, please have me excused. The second man is making a wage income decision, saying, you know, man, can I, can I get in y'all world? And don't y'all get mad at women. But y'all, this is what it would sound like in y'all world, in our world. He would say, oh, I would love to go to church today, but I got to work. Yeah, I got to make that overtime. I got to make that money. I really got to get, I, 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 I got to work on Sundays. I, I can't come. Making excuses. And then the third guy, and it's such a, it sounds so noble. I mean, even my heart went out to me. The third guy says, you know what? I just, I just, I just got married. I just married a wife. And he says, he's kind of bold. He says, and I cannot come. He doesn't even try to be, uh, he doesn't even try to offer any platitudes. He don't try to be, he don't, he don't try to frame it nice. He just says, you know what? I just got married. I got a wife. I ain't coming. He's direct. He's like, and I wanted to give him a little leeway because y'all know how I value marriage. But I couldn't because you know what he could have done? He could have brought his wife. He could have brought his wife. Are y'all ready for this? Watch this. So the servant comes and shows his Lord these things. Remember the Lord, he is a symbolism for God. The banquet is a symbolism for what? Salvation. These three individuals have given what? Excuses as to why they cannot come. Then the master of the house being what? Angry. Okay, 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 all right. Okay. Uh, I, I shared this before, I'll share it again. And when I first got married, I made a fatal mistake. I made a fatal mistake. I just got married. I ain't know no better. Hallelujah. I was out doing some things. Hallelujah. And I was at a, I was at a, a, a friend's house, very close friend. And they said, William, uh, are you hungry? And I said, yeah, yeah. And I, and I ate some food, and it was good. And um, did what I had to do at the house. And I came home. I just got married. Did I tell y'all I just got married? And, I, and my wife said, I fixed your dinner. And I said, I already ate. And my wife said, you, you did what? She said, I prepared all this food. And you're not hungry. And I made a mental note. Don't ever do that again. The Lord is angry because he has prepared a banquet for all of us to enjoy and because of our excuses we tell God even though we tell him pleasantly and politely we pleasantly decline and we politely refuse we say no God I don't want nothing to do with your invitation I don't want nothing to do with your feast. I don't want nothing to do. I get saved maybe later on. Maybe I'll try this church thing. Maybe I'll do something down the road. But right now, life is just too busy. I don't have time. And the Lord, L-O-R-D, lowercase, and the Lord, L-O-R-D, capital, is angry when he invites people to come and they refuse. The invitation has been given out. It's been extended. And if you're, if you're in here and you have not received the invitation, I want to ask you, what is your excuse? So this is what the Lord says. Look what the, what the, look what the Lord says. He says, then the master of the house being angry said to the servant, I tell you what, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city woo, and bring in here the poor. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what we'll do. Go out there, go into the streets, go out into the lanes, get the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind, and invite them to come. I will extend my invitation list. Glory be to God. I'm so glad we are not like the master of the house. We would have locked up everything. We would have shut down the kitchen. We would have canceled the event. Hallelujah. Ah, Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. When we don't get no support, we just want to shut down. But the master of the house say, I tell you what, go back in the street, servant. Diligent servant. 
And if we got any servants in the house of God, go back out in the streets and tell everybody. Good dog, get the ones that would never get an invitation like this. That sit at a buffet with gold utensils. And Anybody ever went to a nice restaurant for the first time and you was like, my God, I don't even know how to act right now. I don't even know which knife to use. Hallelujah. Which one go on which side? I know I ain't the only one. Hallelujah. I ain't never been in a place like this. Glory be to God. We went to one restaurant. It, it messed me up so bad. We had a man standing right next to our table. And every time I got up, he moved with us. I, didn't, I said, I, I said um, he says, I'm your attendant. I said, my God. I, I had to go to the restroom. He went, he went with me. He said, here's the restaurant. And he did it. Boy, it was a he, and he waited till I came out. And I said, my God. I went to grab my water and I drank a little bit of water and he filled, he filled it back up. He said, go get the poor, get the hope, get the maim, and invite them to a banquet like this. Because salvation is like being at a five-star restaurant with your own attendant. I, I tell you, Christ said, I came not to be sir, but I came to serve and be a minister to many. Okay, y'all will get it later on. Y'all will get this later on. Our big brother, our elder brother, Christ Jesus, come to serve us by giving his life. He came to serve, didn't he, sir? And he served to the highest degree. Go get him. Go get him. Tells the servant to go get him. Go get him. Don't worry. Don't worry. He said, okay, all right. They don't want this. They don't want this. They got, they, they work in a in commercial enterprise. Yeah, they work in their business. Hallelujah. He got his new wife. I, yeah, okay. I tell you what, go into the streets, get the poor, the maim, the whole, and the blind. And the servant says, Lord, I've done what you have commanded. Okay. I'm going to give you something free. You can take this and you'll thank me later. You are happiest. Most likely, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. You're probably happiest when you obey God. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. You're probably the most happiest you are when you obey Christ. I, I just need one amen. That's all I need. I just need one. I know what I'm talking about. When you obey Christ, you are happy. The servant said, Lord, I've done just as you commanded. Came back with a good report. And he said, but master, there's still more room. Look at someone say, hush your mouth. <laughs> just, just hush, hush. What, there's still more room. What kind of banquet hall is this? You mean there's more seats available? Ay, 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 look at this. He said, yeah, there is room. And the Lord says to the servant, I'll tell you what. Go out into the highways. First, first, first. I, they told him, that, can, I, can I do it how the Holy Ghost gave me? First, go out on the Broadway and tell him. Okay. And then go down 39th and go down 40th and then go down 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 45th. He said, but this time, go on I 95. And have a sign there. Oh, I, I'm getting excited now. Go out on Turnpike. Go out on Okeechobee, which is one of the business intersections in Palm Beach County. Go out on Okeechobee. On the corner of Okeechobee Military Trail, where millions of cars come by every hour. And I want you to invite anybody you see. Invite them to this feast, to this banquet. Isaiah 55 say, Ho, come, everyone who thirsts, come and buy. He that hath no money. Come and buy. How do you buy without money? Oh, glad you asked. It's already paid for. <laughs> Tell somebody it's already paid for. It's already, it's already, your credit, your money is no good here. In salvation, it's no good. Oh, I'm helping somebody. Your money is no good here. You can't buy your way. You have to accept and believe. Go out into the highways. Y'all see that? Go out into the highways and hedges and watch this and compel them to come. Beg them to come. Urge with them to come. 
Convince them to come. Tell them to come. Why? Because there's still what? There's still what? Oh, there's still room. <laughs> we, we haven't even, we're not even close to capacity. Come, tell them to come. That my house may be You don't have to have a long conversation with people about uh, same sex. You don't have to long. You don't have to have a long conversation with people about transitioning. And I'm and I'm saying not to to uh, excuse or mitigate the emotional component. But I'm talking about when it comes to truth. Here's all you have to say. He makes the first man, first woman, two genders. He he makes male and female. Watch what he says. He takes it. The Bible says he blessed him. He tells him to subdue the earth. He tells them to multiply and to replenish the earth. It means to fill the earth to capacity. That's the truth about male and female. To fill the earth to capacity. He says, go out and get everybody you can so that my house might be filled. Because whatever God creates, he wants to fill it to capacity. And if you don't believe me, look at all of creation before man is created. He creates the sky. He fills it. He creates the sea. He fills it. Not a little bit of fish. A lot of fish. I know that incorrect English. Lots of fish. Not some birds. Lots of birds. And he wants his earth to be filled with sons and daughters of God. With servants of righteousness. Go out and get them. Get them. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what language they speak. I don't care what color their hair is. I don't care if it's curly, straight, or crinkly. Bring them in. Invite them in so that my house may be filled. Then verse 24. What a a condemning statement God makes. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were invited shall taste of my supper. So, Jesus is invited to a dinner, right? We, we said the dinner guests, right? We said the invitees. We said the diligent servant. Before I, before I, I close, I want to I wanna know who's willing to be a, a diligent servant. Who's saved and who's working for the Lord. And no matter where he sends you, you'll, you'll go. Hallelujah. Look at all those hands. Amen. Be a diligent servant. Be a hard working servant like this servant in the passage. Whatever the Lord tells him to do, what does he do? He does it. He don't complain, does he? He, he didn't say, well, it's Saturday. Or he didn't, or the, game, the game is on. Thank you, Jesus. I was able to watch my Colorado Buffaloes later on that night. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Do the Lord's work. He'll let you rest later on. But do his work first. His work comes first. God's work comes first. God's work comes first. God's work comes first. Our stuff comes last. Jesus invited to this this highfalutin dinner. I'm going to be nice. It's a Pharisee. Pharisees back then, they were rich. Most Pharisees, they were rich. Nice house, nice crib. It was it was padded, and Jesus is there. And as Jesus usually does, he's watching. Y'all know he likes to watch. He watches all from time. He watches. <laughs> Don't he watch? He's just sitting by watching. And then Jesus messes up the party. Jesus is a guest, and he messes up the party. He say, you know what y'all do? He say, y'all like to invite people who can invite y'all back. Y'all invite people to dinner who can then give reciprocity and invite you back to dinner. Oh, and you know, some of us are like that too. I ain't going to get, oh, let, me, let me continue on. Hallelujah. We only invite people to our house who can invite us to their house. We only take people out to dinner who can take us back out to dinner. We only, we only do good for people who can do good for us. And Jesus rebukes the whole party. He says, you all only invite men who can return the favor. He says, but you know what you ought to do? You ought to invite people who cannot return the favor. And then this gentleman, we don't know who he is. We don't know his name. He says, blessed are those who shall eat. 
in the feast in the kingdom of God. And as soon as he says that, Jesus gives this parable. He says, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus gives this parable that we just went over. And that man is there. God bless you. And the man is there. The, the, man, the man is there probably because of position or privilege. The man who is there and gives this statement, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. He's probably there because he is there because of position or because of privilege. So he says a statement and Jesus says, you know what? Let me, let me give a parable so that everybody understands. The only way anybody's going to eat bread in the kingdom of God, they're going to have to accept the invitation. You won't be there by privilege. Okay. You won't be there by because of status. Who, who, okay. I, okay. Y'all just bear with me. I, I know some of us must, must, must think we're important. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be a, a mean or condescending. Some of us may think we're important people. But think, just work with me for a second. Try to go to the White House <clears throat> and say you showed up for one of the state dinners and your name. I, I'm not just. I'm William Shelton. I'm here for the state dinner that the president is hosting. First of all, they're going to say, they're going to say, who are you? <laughs> And they're going to see if my name is on the list. And if my name is not on the list, <laughs> they're going to politely escort me off the premises. Not only am I, going to, not only am I not going to get into the banquet hall, they're going to escort me off the property because it is by invitation. Glory be to God. If any of you are going to eat in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to accept the invitation that's being given now. It don't work like this. It don't work like this. Oh, I deal with them. But that's why I ask you, what do you do when you get the little save the date? Because you ain't, you can't at the last minute. Oh, I changed my mind. Now I want to come in. No. As soon as you accept the invitation in your heart, in your mind, your name is written. Your name is added. And guess what? I'm, finna, I'm gonna give you something heavy now because we were in First Peter, and God knows who are the elect of God. God already knows who are chosen. So your name is engraved in His hand. Do you know that? That your name is engraved in the palm. Of God's hand. Because he has chosen you before the foundation of the world. It's going to be a lot of people got way more money than you. Got way more status than you. But saying I don't have time. They're going to give excuses. They're going to give excuses. And they're not going to be able to taste. This beautiful banquet. You think you've eaten good food before. You have no idea. You think you know what joy is on this side? You have no idea. You think you know what peace is on this side? You have no idea until you attend this banquet. It represents salvation. Can you go back to Revelation 19 and 9? It says, right, blessed are those who are what? Called. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And they're gonna know, they're gonna know how you they're gonna know whether you're supposed to be there. They're gonna know by your attire. Do you have on the fine linen, the white linen? And if you don't, they're gonna know that you somehow snuck your way in there. And they're gonna cash you out. The fine linen represents righteousness. Gotta live right. You got to live holy. Being a, being a member of a church and having your name on the church roll is not going to get you into the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
you have to be righteous. Those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right. Blessed. You hear that word? Blessed. Blessed. Do you, Brother Walt, if you don't mind me saying your name, do you know what joy we're going to have? Do you know, can you even imagine what joy we're going to have? And our guest of honor. He's going to be there. All eyes are going to be on him. I just want to be there. I don't need a high seat. I just want to be at the table. And I just want to look at him. 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 I'm just going to look at him. I, know, I, I pray she'll be there. I pray you'll be there. But my eyes going to be on the guest of honor. Hallelujah, salvation and glory. Verse 1 of Revelation 19 says, everything is about him. I just want to see him. Don't be the dinner guest trying to be pious. Thinking he knows the mind of God. Don't be like him. Don't be like the invitees that come up with excuses. Be like the servant who is willing to go out into the streets and the, the lanes, the highways, the hedges, alleyways. Everybody know the alleyways? Remember your mama said, don't you stay out there, alleyway? <laughs> what, what was up with that alleyway? We used to get whippings if we was in the alleyway. There'd be snakes and stuff like that. But the servant went into the alleyways, the streets, the highways, and it compelled me. He said, come on. Everything is paid for. You just have to accept the invitation. You stand on your feet. You just have to accept the invitation. You just have to accept the invitation. You just have to accept invitation. When you accept the invitation, you'll get to know the Lord of the banquet. You'll get to know the guest of honor. The one who's hosted everything. Everything is paid. Everything is paid. He just wants you. He just wants you. Cheer up, my brothers and my sisters. Cheer up. We are citizens of a kingdom greater than the United States. Our king and our Lord is Jesus Christ. And Ephesians 2 says, "You, we are seated where? In far above the heavens. <laughs> if I may, if I may, Brother, Brother Walt, ah, come here, my son. Come here, my servant. Here is your seat. Ah, your name is Aunt. Oh, we've been waiting for you. Come here, my daughter. Here is your seat. Come and dine. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Lift your hands unto God right now. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that have not accepted this invitation, this invitation to salvation, this beautiful salvation, now is the time. Now is the time. He's waiting. He's extending. He's offering. His servants are in the streets proclaiming the good news. <laughs> They're passing out the, the invitation notices. Do you have time? Do you have time to read? Do you have time to even consider? Don't make an excuse. Read what it says. 
read what it said. Look, look at what it's offering you. Those who have received this invitation, those who have said yes, those who have received it, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And you will sit and reign with him. Hallelujah. God. He that exalts himself shall be abased. He that abases himself shall be exalted. Recognizing the need to say yes to this invitation. Recognizing I need to say yes to this invitation. There's a lot of invitations that you can say no to. This is not one of them. Say yes to this one. Say yes to this one. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father God, for you showing us how beautiful this banquet will be in our salvation walk. Thank you for the picture you have given us. Thank you, Father God, for us awaiting that day and that time when we sit down with you, your son, Jesus Christ, and dine with him. Oh, what a day that would be. The marriage supper of the Lamb. May your wife, the church, make herself ready. Adorned and arrayed in fine white linen. May every sin, God, that is in our life, that may we dismiss it. May we, Father God, abandon it. May we forsake it. That there's no spots in our, in our linen. Take out all anger, jealousy. Take away all fear. Take away all disobedience so that there's no spots in our linen. Take away any disbelief. Take away, God, any frustration. Break every stronghold. Let the oppressed go free now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bring hope to the hopeless. Bring comfort to those who are hurting and in pain. Bring deliverance to the captives now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that when they come into your presence, they will be able to appreciate the beauty of your salvation. You have beautified us with salvation. You have clothed us in righteousness. And we thank you that you're removing every spot off of our garments. You're taken away by the blood of Jesus. Wash it away now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have your way in this house. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our schedules. Have your way in our minds. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in our marriages. Let us never be too busy to say yes to you, God. It's always yes to you. We'll follow you for the rest of our life. We're the diligent servant. We strive to be the diligent servant. Wherever you send us, we'll go. We'll do your bidding. We'll please you. Because we understand that even now, there's still more room. There's still more room. Saints of God, you got to keep preaching. You got to keep reaching. Why? Because there's still more room. There's got to be another outreach. And there's got to be another revival. Why? Because there's still more room. This can't be our last service here. We have to have, keep worshiping together. Why? Because there's still more room. Prophet Rene, there's still more room. Sister Linda, there's still more room. And there's going to be people that come that don't look like you. And that's all right. It's going to be people that don't smell like you. And that's okay. It's going to be people that you never would have met if it had not been for Jesus. And that's what makes it beautiful. He makes his, he makes his children one. Hallelujah.
Lord, make them one, John 17, even as you and our Father one, make them one. In Jesus' name, I'm going to the supper. I'm going to the